This week, Steve and Robin give a quick update on how the adventuring is going high in the Oregon Mountains. Stay tuned next week for a full episode on the preparations for making the full traverse across all the jagged peaks here. Also, the live stream, which was scheduled for today, Friday the 13th, will happen next week on the 20th. Our monthly live streams are available to our supporters on Patreon. You can join the live next week for $5 a month or $60 a year. And check out the video description below for a link to our Patreon page. We brought Akiva with us because we're here for a month and we don't want to just leave him back at the boat or with somebody else for that long. So he road trip down here with us and he was great. He slept in the back seat for most of it. I think after the first day he got pretty bored, um, but he was really well behaved. And we got a local dog sitter here named Audrey. So when we are up in the range in places he can't be, uh, Audrey comes by a few times a day and takes him for a nice walk. And so Akiva seems to be doing just fine. I'm so glad for how adaptable he's been. I mean, the last year of leaving the boathouse and living at Ed's yard and moving on to the boat and going back to Granby for a bit, and road tripping to here and He's just taking it all in stride. He just likes to be wherever you are. I think that as long as you're there, he's like, this is great. This is home. Now I'm home. We live in a truck now. <laughs> I don't love it, but it's okay. <laughs> he likes his window, his head out the window. He does like his head out the window. So how are things going in the organs? Uh, we're getting smacked down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is rugged up there and... Um, there, it hasn't been as easy to connect pre-established climbs with the climbs that we're seeing as we're sort of trying to piece together the different sections of the traverse. So we're looking at a wall with cracks in it and not really sure how hard it is, uh, whether it even goes, um, whether it's loose, solid. Uh, so there's a lot of exploration and it's proving to be a challenge <laughs> yeah the guys who did the first ascent really uh understated what they accomplished but we've been going up into the range basically every day that we physically can uh, and have been exploring and putting pieces of the puzzle together and we've been to the library and talking with locals robin actually tracked down the first ascensionist yeah john tilka and he um was willing to have a conversation with us which was incredibly helpful he, he even sent us pictures of some of the notes he took i mean he spent hundreds of hours in the range sort of piecing together the traverse and to date the traverse has been done twice um by once, him both times <laughs> by him both times and so the first time was like the 22 primary peaks which is what steve and i are trying to do and the second time was was it 36 or 39 it was all the primary yeah, i think and it was like summits. 36 peaks in 39 hours or something yeah, like that it's terrain that you have to move incredibly fast in because there's no water so you're carrying all of your water on your back so if you're expecting to be in the high desert for 39 hours i mean i think he said he carried nine liters of water on his back and you're carrying that nine liters of water while navigating not just technical rock climbs but this these knife edge you know loose stacked boulders and talus that are four thousand feet of air on either side of you um, and you have this like momentum of nine liters of water plus your climbing gear plus your camping gear all sort of propelling you <laughs> forward. Um, it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been so much fun. Yeah. I love the scrambles up there and the wildflowers are in bloom right now. So we are getting this incredibly enchanting show of, I've never seen such bright colors in the desert. It's been magical. No, yeah, we got really lucky with that time. I think last time we were after them, or maybe they don't bloom every year. I don't, I don't know all that much about yeah. flowers in the desert. I know they, they only come when it rains, but when Robin and I first met on our first date, I asked her if she wanted to go on a kind of a longer trip with me because Alex and Kira were due to get back from their four-month road trip, and I was going to take a couple weeks off. And Robin was like, yeah. Let's plan something. So on our third date, <laughs> we <laughs> bought tickets to uh, El Paso and flew down here. And one of the things we found in New Mexico that interested us was the range behind us. 
And we came down and we only had a couple days here to check out the range. And we realized that we were gonna need a lot more time to stand any sort of chance of that. Um, so we continued on and we went to White Sands and we went to the Enchanted Tower and had an amazing trip. And this has been an objective that's kind of been burning in the back of our brains. Yeah, I mean, I, I know how to read Steve now after three years, but at the time when we were here, we really had just um, started to get to know each other and I couldn't get a read on how you felt about me. <laughs> like I didn't know, <laughs> I was like, I don't know if this guy's gonna keep me around or not, I can't really tell. Um, and I remember I said to you, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen between you and I. I was like, but I would like to come back and accomplish this objective. Yeah. So we came back and we actually celebrated our three year anniversary the other day, which is the longest that either of us have had someone stick around or the longest that either of us have stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether that says something about us or everybody else. <laughs> A little bit of both. Yeah. Um, we were super psyched to, to be back here, and we're in New Mexico for the whole month. So mostly to, to mess around in the range here and see if we can pull this traverse off, um, but also just to, to get away, to celebrate, you know, what we've accomplished the last few years and all the craziness and um, honestly get away from the boat and all of that just for a little bit. I love it. I can't wait to get back to it. but. When you eat, sleep, and breathe something for seven years, it's nice to just go somewhere totally different. That was a loud truck. That was a loud truck. I think it's been really nice for you to step away from your to-do list. Because yeah. it's not going anywhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, there's a lot to do over the winter, but it doesn't need to be addressed immediately. And I think that not having all of those to-dos staring you in the face every day. Yeah, has, it's um, been nice. Has lightened you. Yeah. Has lightened your spirit. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll tick them off a lot faster when I get back. Yes. And feel recharged and refreshed. 